Hey guys, and welcome back to Banjo-Kazooie. We've dabbled a bit in the water style of gameplay of Banjo-Kazooie. Now we're literally going to be thrown in at the deep end. Welcome to Clankus Cavern, a kind of semi-industrial water level? Yeah, I think water level is the best way to describe this. Because uh, if you weren't proficient at deep sea diving, you're, you better get used to it now. I think this is probably be more classified as a sewer level. Yeah, yeah, sewer level is actually very appropriate because you literally start out in a pipe. Yeah, and also that the, the water is... Well, the less it about it, the better. <laughs> yeah, comment, Cell Dragon. So, if this is the sewer level, is this as bad as every other sewer level in every other video game? Um, are you, are you asking me this with bias or without bias? Um, tell me what you feel. Okay, uh, I didn't realise these commentary sessions were also going to double as therapy. Um, I think it works pretty well to say the, the majority of the colour that we'll be seeing is like murky brown and like copper yellow and such. We're swimming in piss, aren't we? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, I kind of figured we were swimming in piss. I knew this commentary was going to get shitty, but I had no idea how bad. It was in part one when it became shitty with talk of the great Mighty Pooh. Don't you worry. This is Clanker. Surprisingly, not an enemy. I mean, he does technically work for Gruntilda. He's like a trash compactor machine, but uh, against his will, if you will. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just like that little bit of a wordplay there. Yeah. It's very rare for me, and I apologize. Oh, rare, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I just made another one. This is this is going very badly. <laughs> that is literally the only air horn you're going to get, so savor it, dear friend, savor it. All right. You're really going to have to get used to swimming here. I would honestly recommend Banjo's little piddly tap, tap, tap. Get rid of that. Hold down B and do not let go. Swimming is always in these games tend to usually not be very good like i think the best swimming in like a 3d you know mascot platformer i've ever experienced was a uh, anything past ratchet and clank one because they gave you like the speed boost device and then you had the air mask so you didn't have to worry about breathing but swimming in ratchet and clank one was fucking awful like it's just i've never really found it to be done that well in these games i have to admit um, well, I think they actually did a really good job in Banjo-Kazooie, and I'll talk about Tui's uh, use of it in a little bit, but um, again, you have A to swim slowly, you have B to swim faster. If you hold R, or, or L, maybe just R, you can actually turn on the spot, which lets swimming become a much more fluid action. Oh, well, that's good, at least. This terrified me as a child, mostly because we're diving down into a dark area, and what you have to actually do here to free Clanker, or at least send him up to the surface, is swim through the keyhole, or literally the key's hole, three times. And that R button mechanic, yeah, that will come in very handy here. Oh, that just seems mean. It is a little bit. It's asking a lot of a child, because at the end of the day, this, is, this was a children's game. Back then, children were made of sterner stuff. I don't know what's happened since then, but I'm very disappointed with most things. Yeah, we were steel back in the day. Now every child is made of tin, or copper, or, or some weak metal. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that I think, if you look at back at pretty much all old video games, they really do expect a pretty damn high level of skill from the player. I mean, even if you look at the original Mario game, like, that is actually hard. It's difficult. And, I mean, Mario these days, it would be absolutely lambasted if it was, like, it was so easy to get a game over on the first level. I guess. It's not really hard because of what it's asking you to do, you know, dive down, swim through the keyhole. It's because there's a lot of other factors to take into account. The fear of diving down into a dark place, the time limit with your air and whatnot. I mean, they give you, like, an out with um, Gloop or whatever his name is swimming around here, giving you air bubbles. But you have to get to those, and they can pop and leave you helpless if you leave them there too long. So it's just like a lot of factors to take into account. And as a child, I just found it very intimidating. Nowadays, not so much, obviously, because obviously I am made of steel, and that steel has just become more tempered over time. 
Also, you've probably played with worse swimming controls since then, so it's just like, this doesn't phase me. Well, on the N64, the other really good swimming mechanic that comes to mind is actually Zora Link in Majora's Mask, so I wasn't really asking for a lot, or wanting for a lot, when it came to swimming controls back in the 90s. I'm sure there were some really terrible ones, but honestly, I didn't really have a bad time. Yeah, I think the best swimming controls that I can perhaps think of are the ones in Tomb Raider Underworld, which you guys probably won't have played. No. Um, but, like, they're surprisingly good in there. Like, Tomb Raider's always had a lot of underwater segments, and it's quite frequently been in this slightly grotty water kind of thing, because obviously you're going through tem ancient temples that haven't been touched in years, and you're going in the water, so I'm surprised you didn't get ill, to be honest. But... Lazy bastards not changing the water every few years. Well, exactly! <laughs> But the swimming controls in the Tomb Raider franchise have always been pretty excellent, apart from in uh, the reboot, which basically had zero swimming sections, which was very depressing. Speaking of reboots, would you like to see a reboot of Banjo Kazooie at any point? Now with the current team, no. Hell Dragon kind of took the words out of my mouth. The Banjo-Kazooie that people want, like a new one, would not be the Banjo-Kazooie that was created by the team who mostly resides at, you know, Playtonic Games now. I'm sorry, that is a kind of harsh truth, but some people just really don't have a concept of time. You know, people move on and go on to do, like, different things and the like, and uh, it's sad but true, but uh, Rare now is not the Rare of back then. And remember, remember... Uh, and this is admittedly based on supposed, you know, eyewitness reports from former people who worked at Rare. Uh, the last time they tried to make a Banjo-Kazooie proper kind of game, Microsoft fucked with it and made it nuts and bolts, because that was what was in at the time. Hell, they lampshaded it in that game, you know? So, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I really don't see it happening unless Microsoft learns to not fuck with it, but they probably are gonna fuck with it, so no thanks. I guess, I guess. I mean, I suspect that the big test of whether they would mess with a future game would be, one, how Sea of Thieves turns out, uh -huh. but also how Scalebound turns out, which is Hideki Kamiya's next title, which is exclusive to Xbox One, and Microsoft are helping out with things related to that, because obviously Hideki Kamiya is very much a law and his own, same with Platinum. And so they'd like to work without a huge amount of limitations on their creativity wherever possible. So it'll be interesting to see how Scalebound ends up considering Microsoft's involvement in that. And I think if it turns out well, then there may be hope for Banjo should Rare attempt to do it and try and develop it with the same level of care that I think they are capable of doing. I suppose, I suppose. I've just been like racking what little brains I have, trying to come up with a comparison for this sort of level in other video games. I'm thinking of like the sewer sections in Jack 2, uh, that one level with the eel in Super Mario 64, that guy comes to mind, he also freaked me out. Clanker actually kind of did, and, which is weird because the first time you see him, it's literally just a giant set of jaws in your path. Well, yeah, but it's kind of because Clank has got a slight adorableness to him in his design. Like, <laughs> it's the googly the, eyes, isn't it? Yeah, like the eel in uh, Super Mario 64 is, uh, well, in terms of how the graphics were at the time, legitimately terrifying. Because it's Oh, kind God, of like... they're so shitty. Oh, no, <laughs> get away. <laughs> but yeah, it's because it's like really alien features. Whereas Clank has got the googly eyes, and even though there's lots of sharp teeth, it's in a grin. Yeah. So googly eyes match with a grin. It's not as terrifying when you think about it. Mumbo doesn't actually appear until the next world of the game, but uh, they do scatter tokens around, even in worlds he isn't, you know, privy to. And uh, just make sure you pick them all up, because by the end of the game, you will be wanting for Mumbo tokens, I can tell you that much. I guess that Jinjo was blue because he was holding his breath for so long. It's like, God help me, Banjo. <laughs> and, like, I'm immortal, but even this is starting to strain on me. I'm getting a little fed up with this, Banjo. Could you help a brother out? 
Uh, I don't want to discuss like pro gaming tips or anything, but the way I tend to do uh, Banjo Kazooie, or at least Clanker's Cavern, is uh, I do set areas at a time. So like for Clanker's Cavern, I do all the stuff around Clanker, or as much as I can. And then I head inside to one activate the Gruntilda switch, and two get the uh, the move upgrade that we'll be needing to do the rest of the level. I mean, it's a tactic that makes sense. I mean, the thing is, is that this is my ever so slight problem with the way that Banjo's laid out. It's why I do prefer the Super Mario 64 setup, despite the fact that it does kick you out after every star because you're thrown into these levels in Banjo-Kazooie with no guidance of where you need to go. It's just like, just there you go, have fun. And it's just like, for someone just starting, that's kind of a te slightly terrifying prospect. And you're kind of just like, well, I don't know where I need to go. And it's not always particularly well signposted where certain things are. Like, your brain might not think, oh, perhaps I can drop down into the hole where that... A screw is blowing in and out. That might not necessarily register, whereas in Mario 64 you are given the title of the star, so it gives you a clue of where it is, and you've got the camera pan which shows where things are. So there is a logic to how you are meant to get certain things, whereas Banjo is kind of just like, you're just let loose and I don't know, there's something about that that's it's slightly too open in a way? I think, again, Tui is worse in that regard, but uh, I alluded to this in the last part, that's kind of why I enjoy Banjo a bit more than Mario, because they don't kick me out every time I get a fucking jiggy, just let me keep playing. <laughs> nice feature of um, learning a new move from Bowles, by the way, he will fill up your health. Even if you've only lost one precious honeycomb piece, he will fill it right back up. Well, he probably has a lot of honey to spare, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that, oof. this one you can't do without the Wonder Wing. And of course, I guess we got to bring up the obvious point here in that Clanker is a fucking biomechanical shark. And, you know, describing some very, uh, very close N64 level guts and blood in here, which is kind of fucked up admittedly in that cutesy banjo way. Well, I think the textures may be derping just a teeny tiny bit, but again, emulated. In the beta version of Banjo Kazooie, at least from what little beta footage there is out there, there's a quick shot of something massive in deep water that looks suspiciously like a more organic version of Clanker. So, yeah, I guess he may have been properly organic at one point, and then Gruntilda roboticized him, for lack of a better word. Yeah, they're just uh, borrowing equipment from other villains. I guess all the video game villains, they network with each other. Listen, I know Sonic is giving you a hard time. Um... I've been speaking with the Cyber Demon from Doom, and I think he has a solution to that problem. Just make sure he doesn't have rings, is what I'm saying. Wow, we got the script for Wreck-It Ralph 2, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that would make a great Wreck-It Ralph 2. All the video game villains from all the other uh, licenses they had. Well, okay, I guess they'd have to pay him by the second, and that wouldn't really work out. That's why M. Bison had, like, one line, and that's it. Although, it was actually a super important line when you watched the whole movie, so... <laughs> What's funny about um, Clanker is he's kind of a mix of a whale and a shark because sharks, now feel free to correct me, I ain't that good at science last time I checked, sharks don't have blowholes That's true, they uh, they don't I think. Now I'm thinking this and that's a bad sign but I'm pretty sure they have gills but Yeah, they would have gills because they are fish at the end of the day whereas whales are mammals Yeah, Richie dropping them facts I'm glad he's here, because otherwise you and I would be both, ah, I guess it's a whale, maybe, all right, and we'll just go with that. He kind of looks like a bird, I don't know. <laughs> what is down here? Are we going down on part of Clanker we shouldn't be going down? Oh my god. <laughs> These tentacle things are called whiplashes. They look like tumors. I think that's honestly what Rare was going for. No. Oh. Clanker sucks, I don't like him. <laughs> He didn't ask to be turned into a garbage disposal unit. Well, he could still clean himself up a little. He's fucking chained to a rock! I thought we freed him. Are you even doing your job, Banjo? Sorry, not even a rock, an anvil. Yeah, Grunty's just evil. Oh man, you honestly don't know the half of it. Well, I mean, she is the wicked witch, after all. Uh -huh. More like the wicked... 
bitch. Asshole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's fine you're allowed to go with the witch bitch rhyming. A bayonetta takes the piss out of it so much, it's brilliant. Another Hideki Kamiya thing, wasn't it? Yep. Um, well, that's basically just like my life at the minute. It's just platinum all the way. Well, uh, for me, I uh, beat Transformers Devastation not too long ago, and I'm actually doing my forefront through it now as Grimlock. So I I'm going to try and get the most, because I paid full price for that game, so you better believe I'm going to play the fuck out of it. He's pushing for a HFC playthrough of it. I'll try my best, but I can't promise anything this year. Well, I can certainly attempt it once I have gotten all of the necessary equipment, i.e. PS4, Elgato, and all of that jazz. Well, you know, it's on 360 and PS3. Eh, I want, want, the, want the pretty version. No, it, it's going to be the same. It's a low-budget game, trust me. If you get the PS3 version, it's pretty much the same as the PS4. Ah, fair enough. I'll have to look into that. I did mention Banjo Kazooie having like sort of bosses or like boss like set pieces in each level. This is Clanker's Caverns sort of boss. Mutant snippets or muty snippets. <laughs> nope, nope. Just gonna kill them all with the Wonder Wing. Um, c can I just point out that uh, the little jingle that plays when Banjo and Kazooie go into the, the Wonder Wing? Uh -huh. Um. Whenever I hear it, um, my brain just goes, it goes, do 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 and then I want to go, puppy power! Ugh! It's that, it's that exact melody. Oh and my I'm just god, like, it is, what? yeah, Jesus. It, 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 it is, it's the da 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 No, 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 you're not saying it a second time, once was enough. <laughs> it's too close to Halloween for this shit. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Grant Kirkhope, for doing this kind of stuff in this game. Seriously, what an evil, evil, wonderful, talented man. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Wonderful for a sync point, thank you. Right, let's never speak of this place again, although we should probably leave a note for the Environment Patrol. Dear Environment Patrol, try this area again. Shit's all fucked up. I just hope that, like, Banjo doesn't have any open wounds if he really is swimming around in piss. That would burn like hell. Ugh. Probably do a little bit more than burn, mate. Yeah, that's true. I'd like to mention what these things are. They're grill chompers. They, much like the whiplashes, also appear in other levels, but uh, in the case of the grill chompers, they have, like, different skins. Grill chompers sounds like a lunch item at some diner. Would you like a grill chomper sandwich, my lady? Uh, three out of ten for that one. Not really your best work. <laughs> too much water, IGN. Well, too much piss in this case. See, when I take the piss, I didn't actually, you know, mean to actually take the piss here. We are dealing with a lot of pee. Alright, just a few more notes and uh, another jiggy and we'll be done here. I don't want to be here, I'm so embarrassed. Well, aim properly past Tom. Got it eventually. I have to say, there's a ridiculous amount of stuff in and around Clanker. I mean, obviously I know it's Clanker's Cavern, but you would have thought that there would be maybe perhaps a little bit more to the level than just this particular room. Yeah. So is Clanker, like, renting his cavern then? <laughs> I, well, he's not a visitor, he's a prisoner. Well, uh, then he would be renting it, wouldn't he? Like that would be an e that would be an evil thing for Gruntilda to do. You're gonna stay here for the rest of your days, and you'll have to pay me every month. So I says I can't rhyme on the fly. <laughs> give me a bit. I'll come up with something. Thank you. We'll give you a bit, but that joke was shit. I don't think I'm gonna be able to top that. <laughs> and for Tom, that was it. Because Richie was a bit of a git. I just can't stop him. Uh, give, give me something, it's still percolating, it's coming. Well, he's using big words, that means he's serious. <laughs> You're here for now, I'll say goodbye. You're in the cavern until you die. There you go. But I had nothing to do with rent. Fuck the original you. challenge. Shut up! <laughs> what a fucking cocksucker you are. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm so angry that I take the time to make... Th I'm not even pretending right now. It's not faux raid. I'm legit angry that you just piss all over my good rhyme when you can't make one yourself. Well, piss, huh? Well, we are in Clinker's Cavern. Swimming it right now. 
Not too bad. That's the max level of impressiveness I can have towards my own work. Just, eh, could have been better. I think you can go a bit higher than that. I mean, come on, tell us how you really feel. Um, well, I feel I could have caught a few corners here or there, you know. I feel I've made a few mistakes too back in the day, but uh, we just got to move forward. Every day for the past 26 years of my life, I guess. Oh boy. <laughs> That's one impressive speed run. Just gets better and better. This year will be the run. Yeah, I remember when like Mexi had his birthday, I made a joke about how he speed run like three years of his life. He shaved it off of his time. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering where our beloved Mexican base monkey is, um, I have no idea. <laughs> That's why we're recording these with him. He would have been present, but unfortunately we have a schedule to adhere to. Uh, he'll be back when he can, so shout outs to the Mexican based meister. And yes, that means if you are in the hospital, we expect you to do the work. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'll pay you in exposure, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, it works out pretty great. <laughs> Be whip. Now, what about that Mumbo token I was leaving? I think it's around here somewhere. Yeah, it was like just above you somewhere. <laughs> what a cock tease. Oh, don't worry, it's nowhere near as bad as... Oh god, I think it's a, a record, or one of the medal... Yeah, actually, I think it's a record in Aptos in... Well, Windmill Isle in Sonic Unleashed. Uh -huh. There's that one where you're going to where you need to slide under an arch, but above you is a record that you can't get until you have the wall jump, which you don't get until way into the middle of the game. Oh, mm, yeah. It's just like, why? Oh, time for more industry secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gruntilla has her own industries, doesn't she? I think that's in the second game. Yeah, I think it's also in the mid-quill, um, which is Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge, more of which later, just so we don't run out of things to talk about. <laughs> I'll ask you uh, later about your opinion of the game, then. Okay, haven't played it. That's my opinion of the game. Well, that went well. Don't worry, there's still more to talk about. These aren't really secrets if you're her sister. She probably told this person ahead of time already, uh, or... They just learned it through exposure just by living near to each other? No, no, that, that's not why it's a secret. It's because other people don't know. Well, that's true, I guess. God, doing commentary, Mr. Literal, honestly. Do you think they'll ever uh, write, like, a sequel to Banjo, uh, you know, Kazooie, like a prequel when uh, Gruntilda and her sister were living together and this is a wicked joke, so I'm not even going to pretend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of, um, I have never heard, like, track one. I ain't heard Penny One from Wicked until Richie the other day showed me uh, Defying Gravity, was it? Mm -hmm. And I'm fucking addicted to that. It's either that or the One Punch Man opening. Yeah, I just go back and forth, back and forth. A uh, brief trivia about Wicked. You know uh, the person who plays Delia in Pokemon Live, same actress as uh, Elphaba? Is that how you say her name? Elphaba. You mean Adina Menzel? Uh, yeah, yeah, same person. Oh, wow. It's kind of crazy nuts, yeah. Well, it depends on what show you're talking about, really. Uh, well, she was in Pokemon Live, like I said. No, different people have played that witch. Okay, well, the one I saw that was, uh, recorded. Well, the the original Elphaba is Adina Menzel, though obviously the role has been played by many, many other women since then. Uh, the same with Kristen Chenoweth is the original Glinda, but many other women have played her since as well, but they oh, are Oh no, we've originals. got him started! This is what happens when you get me started on anything to do with musicals, uh, Platinum Games, Okami, anything really. Just keep on going down the list. This is what happens when you talk about a musical in the Alps. It would appear that Banjo, wait for it, wait for it, is getting jiggy with it. Thank you. <laughs> I held off on that as long as I could. Okay, I guess we can move forward towards the next level of the game now. Now, this is something that I very much would like to ask. So, uh, obviously, uh, the different level entrances are all over the shop. Right. If you're playing the game for the first time, how the hell, other than just random trial and error walking about, are you meant to find where these level entrances are? Well, for the most part, they're like usually 
at most adjacent to the area where, you know, the level entrance is. So, you know, the one for Tlanker's Cavern, yeah, you need the shot pad to reach it, but it's just in the next room, or at least a couple of rooms away. There's only one that is literally all the way across Gruntilda's Lair, and you will need, like, a warp cauldron to get to. And there is a reason for that, I believe, but we'll talk about that when we actually get to the final level. So yeah, I wanted to bring it up because it just, it's something that's confused me, it's confused me when I was trying to play that small bit of Banjo at the National Video Game Arcade, and it's confused me every time I've watched this because it's just like, with a guide, yes, this all makes perfect sense, but if you're doing it on your own, mm. Well, they just expect you to have a fun time and explore, really. True. I mean, when you kill the enemies, they don't come back, at least for a while. Mm. I mean, in Tui, they respawn pretty fucking quickly. I think in levels in Kazooie, they don't come back at all, which is something I enjoyed a lot, because then I could just explore the world at my leisure, but uh, Tui does not, like, give up. It just keeps going and going until the player is dead. Oh, God. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the words kept scrolling and the truth got worse and worse. Well, I mean, it'd be okay if she was Alphabet, because it means she's also Maureen from Rent, so that would be fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> we know Richie's preferences now. <laughs> no, it's just Indina Menzel played Maureen in Rent, and that was... Yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, Richie. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, we shall see you next time for another installment of the Banjo-Kazooie playthrough. Bye for now.